what is going on good people of youtube it is me chavez and i am back we are back with another day another live stream another player prop talk here on the channel as always i hope this finds you doing well and in good spirits taco tuesday is in full effect be interesting to see what the tacos are today with only four games in the nba going on i'm sure we'll get an mlb taco nhl nba and maybe an esports but i don't care what they are i hope they're good i hope they hit hope everybody's having a good morning today we got player prop talk to go through turds of the day players of the plays of the day um what else injury news yeah and then we'll we'll call it a morning and get on with our day so let's get this going ladies and gentlemen gilbert what's going on good morning to you gmac what is going on good morning to you been pretty active in the discord this morning um uh quite a few plays have already bumped though so hopefully uh hopefully people were able to see the plays the cheat sheet in the discord early this morning um with only four games on the slate we are gonna see some bumps it's just those kind of things uh, on a short slate. And that's what happens. So may have to play lightly or just uh, try to play in some other sports. But NBA right now is going to be very stingy. I, at least I think it's going to be a stingy day with those lines. As we always get started with this morbid fact, over 10% of the U.S. population will, does die in their sleep. You did not. You are here. Hashtag blessed, kind of a, kind of a, um, a dark way to start the morning, but it is it is absolutely fact. So, um, I didn't realize that it was that many people, but it is, and I'm sure it's actually more than ten percent, being that this fact was uh, from 2017. So I need to see if I can find an updated fact, but. Um, the moral of the of the story is <laughs> not everybody wakes up and you did so you're off to a good start and we move on from death to turds of the day i gotta be honest with you um not a whole lot of turds yesterday uh pretty strong day yesterday in the discord um 11 and 2 on the cheat sheet with only Bradley Beal missing his points and Porzingis missing his uh, points and rebounds. He uh, he got off to a good start, just didn't get get it done. And then hit a 25x in the Discord yesterday on Prize Picks. I hit a uh, 10x as well on Hot Streak. Just played the same plays that I played on Prize Picks from the cheat sheet through right off the cheat sheet. So I do play my own plays. When they hit, they hit. Um, when they don't, you know, they don't hit, but yesterday we had a good day. So I, I think that, the, I guess Garland, Darius Garland was, was a turd nominee. I took the over on his fantasy or I took the over on his PRA, but I also wrote him up as a play of the day on fantasy and PRA. I thought that there would be no way for him to go under one and over the other one. They're two correlated props, but in fact, he did go over fantasy and when under pra he hooked it so i was wrong he was right there starters get pulled with three four minutes left in the fourth quarter the game was pretty much done but uh i think if he would have played a minute or two extra he would have found one extra point rebound or assist so i guess for me darius Gar darius garland was my was my turd of the day as he did not come through but didn't have a whole lot else, honestly. Everything else seemed to work out yesterday. What's going on, Jim? Good morning to you. Knuckles, what is going on? Um, a bridge collapsed in Baltimore? What's that? I did not hear about that. Get out of here, little bug. Yep. Damn. Damn. 
news about Baltimore Francis Scott Key Bridge collapses after struck by cargo ship. Oh, shit. Oh, man, that's tough. Damn, that's crazy. That's uh, that's that's really bad. What is going on? Hey, Seuss. Good morning. DF the God. Good morning. Seaver, what is up? After that chop up at the end, I took. Oh, nice. Nice, nice. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I had a uh, half a turd with Maxi. <laughs> half a turd, like a nugget, <laughs> like a little nugget. Uh, had 14 in first few minutes, but couldn't get the 14. Oh, yeah. He got off to a really hot start. Van, oh, Van Vliet was another one. We talked about his first quarter uh, assist. I couldn't play that because it's not available on the Pick'em sites, but he had a pretty he had a pretty quiet game. Uh, I needed Jalen Green to close out in order for that 25X to hit. He was on 25 points for like most of the fourth quarter. And then he had that last, that layup with maybe four minutes left in the game, something like that. Yeah, that, that got real close, but Jalen Green goes over full game points. He does not go over first half points, which was a little surprising. Uh, Dante DiVincenzo was the only one to go over his RA out of those three plays we talked about yesterday. I played them all. I played all three of those guys in different slips. So uh, I lost on those two, but uh, I won overall. I had a nice profitable day. We did talk about uh, we did talk about Boston and Atlanta yesterday. We uh, we talked about Jason Tatum. We talked about Derek White sitting. We talked about him sitting, said there's a good chance of him sitting. And if he sits, then, you know, the, the props for the Celtics get all mixed up. And um, we talked about the under on his assist, on Tatum's assist, but then without White in there, who was running point. I think Jason Tatum had, um, I want to say he finished with six assists, if I'm not mistaken. And in typical Boston Celtic fashion, they blew the lead again, just like they blew the lead against the Cleveland Cavaliers and let, who was it? Dean Wade, Sam Merrill go off for like 30 points in the fourth quarter. Well, Jason Tatum finished with five assists. Okay, so he did finish under, but 37, eight and five. So he definitely saw his full run yesterday. And still couldn't get that job done. That's what the Celtics do. Uh, I think there's a little bit of I don't give a fuck right now with the Celtics being that they've clinched a lot of stuff in the East. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we just see reserves run out the next few games. Unless they absolutely need to, you know, close out the season on a, on a strong note. I don't know. Glad that worked out for you, though, Seaver. Vince... Vince Young got knocked out in a bar fight. What? <laughs> I did not hear about that. CJ over assists, four and a half Middleton over assists at five and a half. All right. All right. We got Van Vliet, a little bit of uh, Darius Garland. Uh, who else? Maxi, half a turd on Maxi. All right. Let's move on. Done with the turds. Done with the turds. Um, injury news in the NBA. So very short list of names here, but some pretty big names with LeBron doubtful. I don't know if he's been ruled out already, but it's very, very rare that you see a player ruled doubtful and then they get ruled in. So it usually just goes down from there. So the next, the next step would be him being ruled out versus him being questionable than probable. Unless the Lakers are just pl trying to play some mind game with the Mil Milwaukee Bucks, which seems kind of stupid. Uh, Trace Jackson Davis is questionable. Hawkes, Kevin Love, Caleb Martin, Bochamp, all questionable. And Ingram remains out. Davis is probable. You got a lot of you got a lot of names for the Miami Heat on that list. So. Keep your eye out for news in Miami. If Hawkeyes sits, I mean, you already have Hero out. Is Duncan Robinson still out too? I mean, you have a lot of depth. If, if one of these guys don't, doesn't go or two of them don't go, they're shorthanded. So it does open up minutes 
for somebody. Maybe um, who's the newest? Who's the newest Miami? Oh, Delon Wright. Is it Delon Wright? Who's in Miami now? All right, injury news. Very short. Only four games on the NBA to, in the NBA today. So just you know, keep your eyes open and um, play light. Play light today. Not worth. It's not worth busting your nut on a four game slate. Just play light. Build bankroll, and then get get geared up for opening day in the MLB. And then tomorrow, there's only uh, tomorrow. There's a more is like basically every team in the NBA is playing tomorrow. So maybe build bankroll up today and uh, get ready to dig in tomorrow. All right, let's talk about NBA players. Now, listen, I had a few players that I wanted to talk about, but they got bumped and removed. So um, they're on the cheat sheet, unfortunately. Uh, we can't play them at the original line that I had them at. So I thought it'd be pretty cheap to talk about them as if they were still up, knowing that they weren't. But if you were curious as to the plays that I was looking at to talk about in today's video, one of them was D'Angelo Russell's assist at seven and a half. And um, that's in a good spot. We'll take a look at that anyway, because I think without LeBron James in the lineup today, Russell Russell's in a spot uh, to go. To go over a few of his props, Chris Middleton also was a play that I wanted to talk about. Uh, his points, his PRA, um, his three-pointers made. He's in a good spot as well. So those were a couple of plays that I wanted to talk about. Those lines, D'Angelo Russell got removed. And Chris Middleton has seen a couple of bumps since 5 o'clock in the morning. But we'll start there. And then we'll just, uh, we'll just transition into a few of your player props. If you're new to the stream, hit that like button on your way in. Um, we're getting ready to break stuff down, starting over on prospects. Actually, before we do that, before we do that, as always, all player prop research is brought to you by props.cash. There's my promo code on the screen. Thanks 25. Use it, receive 25% off your first month. If you've never seen props.cash before, don't know what it is. You're getting, uh, you're going to get a good look at it today because we use it in live streams every day. So Get to see it used in real time. If you like what you see, then you can use that code to sign up. If you don't like what you see, no harm, no foul. But what better way to uh, promote a product than to actually use it in uh, in real time, live on a stream? Now, here we go. Let's go over to props, or let's go over to prize picks, and let's start talking about some player props today. We can talk MLB, NHL, NBA. I mean, whatever you guys want to talk about break it down we'll do it we'll do it together what is going on steven good morning good morning uh jovich over six and a half points i actually wrote him up in the discord as my play of the day got him on the cheat sheet at six and a half yep carrie what's going on carrie good morning divine what is going on good morning to you i think if i don't see any projections i'm not gonna bet anything yeah i mean that there's nothing wrong with that oh price picks want you to bet they want you to bet maybe keep it real simple you know 20 dollars today play some tacos on price picks play some discounts on underdog keep it pretty simple try to build some bankroll all right let's get this going did vince young really get knocked out in a bar fight when when I saw Vince, I thought Vince Williams Jr. and I was like, "Golly, what the hell is going on in the NBA?" Um, yeah, I hear about the uh, Jonte Porter thing where he's uh, what is he is suspended indefinitely for uh, sports betting? <laughs> when are these fucking guys gonna learn, man? Like they're not smart. You're not gonna get away with that shit. You're making a lot of money in the NBA, like even as a even as a two way player, you're making like over six figures. And you're over here sports betting, and you're and you're uh, you're not good at it because it's a side hustle. It's just something you're trying out. So you're, a, you're not good at it. B, you're risking your career. And then C, you got to pay fine. So like, you're losing money. These guys are so stupid. They're so fucking stupid. Like, if you're gonna do that, get somebody to do it for you. Like, put some put some links in that chain to separate you from the from the damn you know from the damn action. 
he's probably logging in like his username is his real name and shit. It's like, how did you guys know? It's like, dude, your profile picture is your ESPN picture. All right. Let's talk about this Jovich six and a half. Uh, there's Chris Middleton right there at his, uh, with his assist. I know that was brought up in the chat by Jim. We got CJ McCollum at four and a half assist. So all these plays are available on prize picks and underdog. D'Angelo Russell. Now, his assist got bumped up to eight. I said they got removed. They did, and then they got put back up at eight. So there's this play, and then there is his first half PRA. Unless it got bumped up to 17 and a half, which I hope it did not. It's still at 16. We can take a look at that, and we'll take a look at his assist at the same time. What else? Draymond Green over points. Let's move back into full game. We'll also take a look at Odd Shopper here through, uh, throughout the stream to see if there's any value popping across the board. seven and a half points that's a very popular play well it's a popular play not very but it's popular divine is calling for luca triple double and sabonis triple double we might need to start adding josh hart to that triple double alert what's that two triple doubles in the last week gafford over 11 and a half points that is now six players on the board all right. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Um, like, I, I don't understand, like, how people are, how, how athletes are getting caught, like, betting on games. Just have somebody do it for you. Like, have your bookie, have your assistant, have your bookkeeper do it for you. Just distance yourself from that shit. It's got to be just for the fun, right? Because you can't possibly need you can't possibly need money. I mean, that's interesting. All right, so we have Gafford over points, Green over points. D'Angelo Russell will take a look at his first half PRA. We got a lot of overs in this in this lineup here. All right, the only player we don't have in here that I want to talk about is Chris Middleton. So when we come back, I will just have his uh I'll have his lazy, lazy ass face, his lazy eye. What's up with his eye? There's there's something going on with his eye. I don't know. It's a lazy eye or just sleepy eye or whatever. We'll have it on the screen ready to roll. All right, let's go over the props.cash and let's start breaking some player props down. We can also look at NHL, we can also look at M M MLB. No college basketball today, right? Or uh, is it just like NIT today? It's not the it's not the turning. Most of the games aren't until tomorrow or Thursday or Friday. I was looking at some MLB player props earlier this morning. I did throw an MLB slip in the Discord. Very light play, just based off what's available now. Just trying to kind of knock the dust off, the rust off, the NBA, the NBA memories trying to work those muscles back in the in the shape all right let's take a look uh i got four games on the slate so this should be a pretty straightforward breakdown there's not a whole lot to dig into in terms of teams but let's start in miami and we'll talk about a couple of players we'll start with this jovich play at six and a half points and um it's at seven and a half as you can see on some books but price picks is still up at six and a half this will get bumped up. Once it gets bumped up, I don't know if you want to play it because now he needs eight. He has gone over it in three straight. He has gone over it in six out of ten games. But obviously, six and a half is a much easier number for him to come uh, to get the over on. 
as he's gone over that in four straight and he's gone over that in 80 percent of his last 10. last time he's uh last time these two teams play or at least the last time he played versus the warriors he did throw up 11 that was this season projected for eight so if this gets bumped up to seven and a half he does need eight he is projected for eight and it's close but it's 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 an over Now, what I liked about this play when I was writing it up was looking at his minutes. You know, first of all, Miami is hurting right now in terms of injuries. You got a lot of question, uh, questionable players, but he has seen no fewer than uh, 15 minutes in his last 10 games. Ceiling is 33. He's shooting 50% from the field. Now, he's not taking a ton of shots, okay? But in most of these games, he's ho hovering around at six. So he's averaging six field goal attempts. He's making three. The dude's taking four three-pointers. Uh, he's taking four threes uh, per game. He's making one, <laughs> one and a half. But he's taking four. So four out of his six shots are from three. Now, if he knocks down two, that's six. He just needs another, he just needs another point to go over six and a half. This one's in a good spot. There's really not a whole lot to it. There are a lot of things to like about this play, but... It's pretty straightforward. I love it at six and a half. I'm probably not going to touch it at seven and a half just because the bumps aren't necessary. You don't need to play the bumps today. Let's look at Draymond Green's points at seven and a half. So three straight, uh, three, three, oh my God, three straight games of 10 plus points, five out of his last 10. Numbers against Miami. One up, one down, but he has not played them this season. So there's really not a whole lot to put into the history here. Projected for 11.5, which is basically 12, which seems a little inflated to me. You don't need him to score 12. You need him to get eight. When you look at the odds here, you have pretty much uh, all books seeing this the same way, where the over is favored with very little juice to the under, which is positive. Draymond's really not known for his scoring, to be honest with you, but... You're not really asking a whole lot of them. Yes, there are games where he can give you two points or zero points. But let's zoom out of this and even look at the last 15. He's scoring in every single game. He's not scoring 10 points in every single game, but he's scoring in every single game. So it's not like he's just focusing on dishing assist or grabbing rebounds. He's actually trying to score, which is great. You need him to get you eight today. Hopefully this game stays close and competitive. It is in Miami, so hopefully the home court advantage works well, but not to the point where we see this game over in the third quarter. So I definitely like this one. If this were to get bumped up to eight I or eight and a half, I'd just stay away from it. I would stay away from that one. Let's look at D'Angelo Russell's first half PRA because I did like his assist. I guess we can take a look at his assist. If you had any interest in playing his assist at eight, I think it's still in play. He is only projected for six and a half. I don't care. I think that's wrong. Now this doesn't look all that great, but let's do uh, let's do this little thing called uh, take LeBron James out of the lineup and bam. So that's what that shit looks like when LeBron James is not in the lineup over the last 15 games. Now, let's make sure all these games are played this season. That's nine out of the last 10 games. And then over the last five games this year without LeBron James, D'Angelo Russell has gotten no fewer than nine assists. Some pretty decent matchups in there against Boston, against the Clips. Last time these two teams played, LeBron sat. He got you nine assists. This one's in a good spot. If you want to play it at eight, you can. If you can still find it at seven and a half, that's the best line. Now, first half PRA is at 16, not 16 and a half. Let's bring it down. So at 16, what the fuck just happened here? So at 16, Russell has not gone under this in the last five games without LeBron James. He has pushed once and gone over and four. I like this one. I like this one. 
I don't know if there's a big difference of home in a way because this is the last time the last time these two teams played it was in LA. But four of these five games without LeBron have been on the road and doesn't really seem to impact Russell. So long as AD plays, this game stays close. If by chance Giannis sits, I I don't know where I heard he might sit today. He's not on the injury report unless I missed that. If he sits, then this game gets really interesting because then I would love to just see a back and forth between Dame and D'Lo. That would be fun. Just chuck up threes. But as is, I think this isn't a good spot to go over first half. And then if you want to play the over on his eight assist, be my guest. But look for it at seven and a half first. That's your best line. All right. Who else was there? We had... Jovich, done. Uh, oh, we got to look up Middleton. Middleton, McCollum, and Gafford. So let's look up. Let's stay in the same game. Let's look up Chris Middleton. A couple of different plays. Wait, did I have Chris Middleton in there already? We did. We had his assist in there. I said we will come back and look at his props, but we already had his assist in there. So we won't come back and look at his props. We're going to look at him right now. So 14 and a half points. This is what is uh uh the this is the line on underdog and prize picks. Numbers against LA do need to go back to last season, but the history is there. Five out of his last 10 games, and then two out of his last five. He is projected for 16 points, which to me feels right. That feels like a strong projection. It's not too high, it's accurate. Minus 125, minus 140, minus 129, minus 130 on all the books to go over. So this one is sitting in a strong spot. We could take a look at his assist. Sitting at five and a half today. He's gone over in three straight, four out of his last five. And he's gone over in 60% of his last 10. Head to head with the uh, Lakers. You do need to go back to last season, but one up, one down. He's projected for six assists. Three-pointers made was another one you can look at, sitting at a 1.72 projection. All books like this one. All the books like his props today. This one, maybe you don't feel as good about because you would think that making two threes is easy for a lot of NBA players, but you will learn that it is not. So one and a half seems like a very low number, but for a three, um, for a lot of NBA players, the three-point shot is a low percentage shot. I mean, you're shooting 35% from three. I mean, that's still pretty low percent if you think about the rest of the field. But it's good for a three-point percentage. Chris Middleton on the year, he's gone over this line in 54%. Over his last 10, he's gone over in 60%. And then over his last five, he's only hitting at a 40% rate. So there is some regression here, positive regression. If he gets back up to 50% in this game and he takes four threes, he'll make two. But if I had to rank him in order, I would say those assists look the best, then his points and his three-pointers made. If you like his points, then you can play his threes and his points in two different slips and hope that his threes help close out the full game point prop. CJ McCollum over his assist. This is at four and a half. Now, we took a look at these guys when Brandon Ingram was ruled out last game, and we pivoted off of Zion because his numbers without Ingram were not great. McCollum's numbers went through the roof when playing without Brandon Ingram. Then Zion goes out and does great things the last game. So... Four out of the last five games, McCollum has gone over this line. He's averaging six assists. He's averaging uh, 6.2 assists versus the, the Thunder. Two games this year, one up, one down. Four out of his last 10 without Brandon Ingram in the lineup. It does, it does look better. Not all of these games are from this season. So three of these games are last year. And the rest of these, pretty good numbers. 
projected for five assists and the odds slightly favor the over on DraftKings. But Caesars and BetMGM do not like the over on this one. And FanDuel is undecided. So you're getting some muddy odds here. There's nothing that's saying, you you know, this is like unanimous over here. So you have a decision to make on this one. Let's see. Potential assist for CJ McCollum. Sorry. So he's averaging, what, five assists per game without Ingram over the last 10 games. 5.9. In those games, McCollum is averaging 11 potential assists. His teammates just need to knock down shots. That's the problem with assist. Can't do both things. You can't pass to yourself and make a shot unless you alley off the backboard. But this is promising. The potential assists are there. If his teammates are knocking shit down, then five assists doesn't seem that that high of a number. Especially without Brandon Ingram in there to kind of take those assists away from him. All right, let's take a look at who was left. Daniel Gafford over his points at 11 and a half. So Gafford had a pretty strong game yesterday overall. 13 points, three straight games of 13 or more. This looks like he's flicking us off. Eight out of the last 10 games. Since coming to Dallas, man, he is... He looks like a different player. Amazing what change of scenery will do to you. You get to play alongside one of the, the greatest players in the world. Yeah, I'm sure like, I'm sure that alone just made him happy. Um, three straight, four out of his last five, 80% of his last 10 games now against the Kings. Now keep in mind, all these games were as a wizard, right? He's probably depressed and shit, probably didn't even want to play. He's probably crying in his car on the way to the game and had to like just suck it up, right? So these three games... You know, different team, different role, different everything. He's projected for 15 points. Now, that's a little high in my opinion, but 12 is well within well within range. And then on DraftKings Bet MGM, you see the odds here split, and then FanDuel does like the over. So you're getting three books that like the over with some juice to the under, but Caesars is the only one that is undecided. Outside of that, you're getting good game logs. You're getting, um, you're just getting a player who is in a good spot to to do these, uh, to do the simple things like grab boards and, and score points, and that's what they need him to do, and that's what he's been doing since coming to Dallas. He's been doing a lot of it. It's a good spot, good matchup against the Kings. Also, if the Kings are going to be still without Trey Lyles and Vazenkov, you're. Your front court is a little thin behind Sabonis. Pretty good. I like that one. All right. Six up and six down. We had a lot of overs on this one. And not one of these plays that we have like eh, mixed feelings on. I think the only one is, I would say, the biggest reservation I have is on Draymond. Just because he's not the first second or even third option maybe not even the fourth option on that team so a lot of his points come from just putbacks maybe the occasional corner three and so you got to hope that he has an efficient shooting night because i don't think he's going to take a lot of shots outside of that i think all these are in good spots so we'll screenshot these we'll throw these over in the discord if you're new to the stream welcome hit the like button on your way in and the reason I take screenshots of all these plays is I put them in my Discord. That way you can refer to them later in the day, help you with your research process. You're welcome. All right. Let's see what I miss, what I miss, what I miss. Jim says, Jovich is my new easy point prop win. Yeah, he has been crushing. Yeah, good percentage of these guys are vetting. Just haven't been caught yet. It's like steroids, man. It's like PEDs. You know, you used to get the heads up like, hey, you're going to get tested in two weeks. Oh, you just clean out your system and then you're good to go. You do your thing and then 
piss in the cup and you're good then they started just then they just started like popping in on you at lunch you know and then you got screwed at some point i'm sure these the nba and nfl will implement a system that'll be able to figure out like what's going on however there are probably ways to get around it again i think the simplest way is to just have your have your accountant do it for you have your have your investor whoever's like running your portfolio have them do that shit for you in their name <laughs> why do you have to be associated why do you have to why does your first name have to be in the username yeah oh yeah i mean after hearing about the referee shit you know back in the 90s these referees were shaving points and doing all that stuff man these guys were getting paid no dope you know what's going on yeah i'm just reading just catching up what's going on darrell good morning damien what is up Uh, yeah, Keegan, Keegan is starting to heat up a little bit just in time for the playoffs. Let's take a look at Brooke Lopez over first half, uh, first half PRA. Eight and a half, still eight and a half. It was eight and a half on Sunday. He crushed that with 13, I think. Uh, Seaver has a soccer play for us. I'm not going to attempt to pronounce that second. All right. Mikal Tudaze. Mikal Tudaze. George's Mikal Tudaze. Bam. Nailed this shit. Over 0.5 shots on goal. Shots on target. This guy. All right. If I were a known, if I were a known millionaire, would you would I buy a big game, big game, or higher security? Would I buy a game like, oh, big gun? Oh, <laughs> I was like, what? Oh, I hire security. Yeah. What's going on, Vu? Good morning. Yeah, I'd hire security and just let them do their job. You know, some people hire security and then they instigate shit. So then their security has to like kick the shit out of people. And then they get like, they get off on that. People get off on seeing people get beat up, but they start the fight, you know? It's like what bad girlfriends do. They they pick fights and then you got to fight and then you get beat up at some point. They, they don't give a shit. They just want to be fought over. I would just let security do their thing. I would just let them do their thing. Hire real security, not like street security, not like guys that have like scratch soft serial numbers on their on their guns, like real, like probably like seals or berets or rangers. Like if I had the money, that's what I would do and let those guys just do their thing or maybe like some ex MMA fighters or something. I'd hire Nate Diaz as my security. If I had the money, I'd hire Nate Diaz just to like hang out with. He seems like a fun ass, fun ass dude when he's not punching you in the face. All right, we got Brooke Lopez over first half. We have uh, Georgie's over shots on goal. Russell over turnovers. That's another way to look at it. If Russell's going to have the ball in his hand a lot more, if he's running point, if he's doing all these things, then. Um, you can definitely look at his turnovers. High usage players will turn the ball. They'll make more plays. They'll do more scoring, but they also will probably result in more turnovers because they just have they just have the you know more opportunity to do it. What else we got? The Heat might be sparked after that loss to the Cavs. I thought the Heat beat the shit out the Cavs. What am I missing? 
the Heat. When's the last game they had? I thought the yeah they beat the Cavs by thirty five points. Yeah, the Heat took care of business. Which is why I was on Garland yesterday because I thought that was a nice bounce back for him. And we got his PRA under 30, which I thought was a pretty good line. We'll take a look at we'll take a look at Murray's points today just to see what's just, just to see what's going on with him. Giannis over turnovers. All right. Got some turnovers here. I don't know where I heard that Giannis might sit today. I feel like they need to win as many games as they can. I don't think they're in a position to just coast. Oh. Oh, I got I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Giannis has been ducking smoke. <laughs> What's going on, ye? All right. Giannis, Murray, Russell. I wonder if we can look the soccer play up. Um, and then Brooke Lopez. That's five. We got fantasy score up now. Oh, I love I love fantasy score. I love breaking down fantasy scores. Let's see. Um The first thing I look at when I try, when I look at fantasy scores, like first first look, just high level look, I just look for every score that hasn't been touched yet. All these have been bumped. Jimmy Butler, I don't know if this one's been bumped, but you can tell when they've been bumped because they're starting at the point zero. That's the movement. They've already been moved. So there aren't a lot of fantasy scores on, on prize picks right now. Out of, out of these, these are all gross. These are all gross. Maybe Bam. Just like without doing any research, without doing anything, I would say maybe Bam. Just because his position for a double-double was pretty strong today. Like like a 15 and 12 double-double from him. That's 30, that's 30 fantasy points right there. And then he would need to get some blocks and steals and a few assists and little, little to no turnovers. And then he can crush 40 pretty easily. But there is not a whole lot on a fantasy board that I like. All right, let's just take these five plays. Uh, you want to talk about Pajemski under 20, 21, Asus? We can do that. Yeah, ye, you got to look. Um, you got to look for those players that can do more with the defensive stats. Because unless you're a high scorer, unless you're just like a Tyrese Halliburton usage guy where you can match your points with assist. It's hard to go over fantasy points with just PRA. You got to be scoring like 30 and 12 and eight assists. So if you can chip in like Gary Trent with three steals every game, Alex Caruso is another good one. If you can find his, uh, DiVincenzo, those guys get it done on both sides of the court. That's what you want to target. Let's look at the under on Pajemski. All right, we got six players up. Let's head over to props.cash. Gafford's another one. We talk about Gafford blocks and steals. Remember in Washington, um, our rule of thumb when he was in Washington was anytime you have his blocks and steals under three at two and a half, we're rolling with it. Maybe not so much in Dallas because it's a different team. But when he was in Washington, he was he was averaging. I mean, he was getting like two, three and a half. But that's what you look for with fantasy scores. All right, let's stick in this Dallas Sacramento game. Let's take a look at Keegan Murray's points. I think they're at 16 and a half on prize picks, also. Yep. All right. Now, I wasn't pushing for these points, I wasn't like writing this up, but. Uh, He's starting to cook a little bit. 
15, 16, 22, 23. Four out of the last six games, he's gotten you 15 or more. So he's starting to heat up a little bit. This matchup against Dallas is uh, a pretty good one in terms of defensive rating and just pace of play for them. His numbers on the books, you're getting indecisiveness from all the books except FanDuel that likes the under, but these other three are undecided. They don't know what they want to do with it. So it's not good or bad. You just got to build your own case around it. He is projected for 17 points, so you got that going for you. His numbers against the Mavericks, one out of two games this year. So one up, one down. He's a power forward. Why do I think of him as a shooting guard? All right. Power forwards versus the Mavericks. Markinen and Collins crushed. Markinen goes over, but doesn't go over his point prop. It gets you more than 16. I don't know. Uh, they're not really getting not really getting crushed people are going over their lines but they're not doing it by crazy numbers yeah minutes are good field goals uh back-to-back -back games with 13 plus he's averaging 10 he's making five per game i mean you could look there but it wasn't something that was on my radar. I just wanted to dig into that a little bit. All right. Um, where were we going to go? Lopez, right? Brooke Lopez over first half PRA at eight and a half. I'll tell you what. If Giannis does sit today, you're not going to know until like six or something if you locked in any player props for the bucks you you are pretty much guaranteeing i don't want to say a win but that's a really high upside play without Giannis there if he sits but it in the last uh three games versus the lakers brooke lopez has gone over this including one game which was about two weeks ago over his last 10 games, he has a 60% hit rate with five straight games, 100% hit rate in his last five games. Projected for 19.84. So if you just do the simple math at 20, that's 10 PRA per half. If you round it down to 19, that's basically nine and a half PRA for, per half. And he's at eight and a half. So you are getting some really good value on Brooke Lopez first half PRA. Until this gets bumped up to nine, and you can still probably take it at nine. But why wait? If you like it now, it's not going to get lower. Just play it at eight and a half. We'll talk about Giannis in the same game and Russell turnovers. So let's go over to turnovers. There was a while there for a while you could just pull pull the trigger on his turnovers every game because he just he just plays so aggressively and just charging fouls. And then he kind of uh kind of cleaned it up a little bit, but he's still good for three turnovers a game on the year. Over his last 10, he's averaging three. Over his last five, he's averaging four, seven, and four. I had 11 turnovers in these two games. But he can also go out there and just turn the ball over two or three times. Against the Lakers, turned it over four times last time they played. Projected for 3.38 turnovers. So you would round down to three. That's exactly what he needs to go over. Caesars likes the over. Bet MGM likes the over. But they're not real strong odds. These are almost a, co a coin flip. Caesars does like the over a little bit more. Turnovers are funny, though. It's a little volatile turnovers. But you target players who have the ball in their hands a lot and who like to play hard, like him. And just see what happens. 
Russell over turnovers is in a different spot. So what we'll do is we'll look at his turnovers as as they are now. Over his last over his last ten, and then let's uh, let's take LeBron James out and let's see if that impacts his numbers a little bit. Now the game against Milwaukee a couple weeks ago, he he managed to keep the turnovers under three. In this game, you do need him to get you three or more. And in the last 10 games without LeBron, he's done that 60% of the time. In his last five games, he's only gone over th three turnovers twice. Yeah, it's in play. His odds today, well, his turnovers are projected for 2.3, but his odds... On BetMGM, like the over at minus 130, and Caesars likes it at minus 123, but more juice to the under. So BetMGM really likes this play. You could take a you could take a shot on this one for sure. What about on the road? Does it matter if he's on the road? Does he turn the ball over more? Uh, last five games without LeBron on the road, he's averaging three. So there you go. Maybe that is a little bit of information to help you make a decision on that one. Brooke Lopez in the books. Russell, Murray, Giannis. Let's look at Pajemski. Let's look at Pajemski under fantasy score. All right. So let's start with his turnovers projected at one point. Excuse me. Uh, line of 1.5, minus 194 to the under. So this is telling you that he'll maybe get you one, maybe zero. But let's just say he gets you one turnover. So he's negative one. He has a line of eight and a half points. He's uh, minus 130 to go under. That's telling you he gets you, let's be generous and say eight. So he's at eight points minus the one for the turnover, and then he's at seven points. Rebounds under that, let's say he gets you five. That's six points. That's 13 fantasy points. Assist, going to get you four assists today. That's six. That's 19 fantasy points. And then blocks and steals. So minus 214 is a hell of a big number. So that's telling you that he could get you up to two blocks and steals. You're at 19, that's 22, that's 25 fantasy points. That's 25 fantasy points. If he only got you one block and steal, that would be 22 fantasy points, which would be the over. He would need to turn the ball over one more time, or he would need to score you less than... Um, he would need to score you less than eight points. If he got you seven points, because he's going to manufacture his RA. He'll get you four rebounds, four assists. It's going to come down to his points. If he gets you eight or more, I think he crushes fantasy score. If he's uninvolved in the offense and only gets you seven or six, I don't think he goes over. He needs, he needs all those categories to be to be active if we just did it by the projections this is nine plus six that's 15 plus three that's uh 19 and a half points right there that's 22 and a half points minus one that's 21 and a half so he's over by a smidge i think it's a good play i think it's a play you put into a uh, flex not a power play Hopefully he turns the ball over more than once. That would that would help out a lot. All right. Five NBA plays up, five uh NBA plays down. I want to look at the uh wait, maybe not that one. Hold on. not able to when is that soccer play is that tomorrow that's today what league is that that's not epl is it it's not epl or major league soccer 
All right, we got Lopez over first half. We have Russell over turnovers. Um, I didn't really like what I saw with Keegan Murray. I just threw it in there to see if um, if we could find something. I'm gonna take him out though, because I don't want to. I don't want to confuse people on that one. If we saw better numbers, I'd leave it in, but nobody asked about him really. I just wanted to check it out. So Lopez over, Russell over, Giannis over turnovers, and Pajemski. This is this is like this hinges on his turnovers and points. If he turns the ball over more than once and gets you less than eight points, I think he stays under this. I think he stays under this. But let's roll with it. Let's roll with these plays here. Again, not a whole lot on the NBA board. It's a great day to play lights or uh, play other sports. Maybe just wait for the tacos to be dropped on the board. Which they have not. Yeah, no tacos yet. That's cool. Kaminga under rebounds. We got Kyrie threes. Zion under PRA. It's at 39 and a half. It got bumped up. Barnes threes. Kyrie threes. Luca under points. That's that's uh, that's a good one. Oh, and under points is at 34 and a half, I think. Yeah, let's check out some uh oh, it's a Euro qualifier. Gotcha. 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 Okay. Let's um, let's pull up the Otani total bases. That is one that I put in my MLB slip. You know what? <clears throat> if it's still on the board, if they make if they make a taco to, for an MLB taco today. I think we see glass now strikeouts get dropped down to like five and a half. This feels like a candidate for a taco. It's the highest strikeout prop on the board. And that's usually what they target, right? Glass now will be a taco or um, maybe Justin Steele because he's so heavily favored to go under. Maybe they drop it down to four and a half or something like that. But I think glass now is a candidate for MLB taco. All right, so we're gonna look at some three point props. It's 10.02 AM, appreciate y'all being here. 35 viewers on the stream, thank y'all so much. Hit the like button on your way in. Show some love, if you're new to the chat, if you're new to the stream, drop a question in the chat. I'll prioritize your question, I'll bump it up, make sure I get to it ASAP. All right, so let's look at some three-point props for... What the fuck? <laughs> I'm clicking on this damn thing. Uh, let's look at some three-point props. We got Kyrie three-pointers and Harrison Barnes three-pointers. This is the world we live in. This is the world we live in on a four-game NBA slate uh, where Harrison Barnes is now a... Uh, He's in play. And he's not on the board. So can't look at his threes. And can't look at Kyrie's threes. Took him off the board. What else you got, Divine? Throw another one in there. Let's take a look at Lukey Duke. Under 33. I thought it was at 34. It was at 34 a couple games ago. I know that. Jovic under. Or excuse me. Jovic threes. Uh, Demon threes. He is taking four game. We, we looked at his. We looked at his full game point prop. He's taking four three pointers a game. He needs to make two. What's going on, Ruben? Good morning. Jokic, uh, Jovic got bumped up to seven and a half. Okay. Yeah, I knew that was going to happen. We saw it. We saw the odds. We, we, we figured that would happen. 
J Will under one and a half threes. Yo, Price Picks is just taking all those off the board because they're too good to leave up. I'm not surprised. Zion. All right. Kaminga was the other one, right? Kaminga under rebounds. Kaminga under rebounds. Pajemski, Pajemski under rebounds. Draymond under rebounds. All the unders for the rebounds. And then on the other side. Okay, what am I not seeing here? <laughs> They're just taking these plucking plays off the board. <laughs> And then on the other side, um, Bam over 10 and a half. If he's not on the board, I wouldn't. There he is. Bam over 10 and a half rebounds on the other side. Vu says more sugar, more tacos. Oh, this is it. Curry. Un okay. Curry's line reduced. Uh, Draymond Green. PRA, BAM, ooh, BAM rebounds. That BAM rebound one looks like a, like a, like a steal. And then that makes me feel like it's a trap. Cause I liked it at 10 and a half and it's like, you don't even have to drop it down. It's a good number at 10 and a half. Why would you fuck with it? It makes me think. All right. We shall see. You guys uh, check out Giddy Up, Giddy Up Trees, Giddy Up Trays. Um not on prize picks, Ruben. Giddy's trays are at They're at nowhere. <clears throat> They're in the Bermuda Triangle. These motherfuckers got lost. <laughs> they got lost in route to prize picks. Yeah, you're gonna have to find his gonna have to find his trays on another pick'em site or play it on a book. Like Hard Rock always has these three point props at 0.5 for the first quarter and things like that. You can find these alternate lines. A lot of them are in good spots. See, even on underdog, his threes are at 1.5 and they've, they've made it a payout boost. So he has to make two. If you took the under on it, it's only a 0.7 payout. It's not, that's a nerf. That's a goblin, basically. So BAM's at 56%. Oh, man. See, I like the BAM rebounds. And then I hate when they make it a taco because that makes me feel like it makes me feel like there's something up. I'm very, I'm very pessimistic when it comes to tacos. All right. Yeah. Middle 10 points, Divine. Luca just got bumped down to 33. We'll look at it anyway. Uh, Middleton's points got bumped up to 15 and a half. So figured that would happen. All right. We got a lot on the board. Let's do this. Any unders? We got Zion under. We got Luca under. No, Middleton over. If you don't like Middleton's points at 15 and a half, you can look to his PRA. Um, you can also look to his... Uh, uh, yeah, maybe that's it. <laughs> maybe that's it. All right. We got enough. Let's roll. Third round player props will probably be the last around the player props that we do today. All right. Where we want to start? Let's start let's start with Shohei. Let's start with Shohei's one and a half total bases. Now remember he's in LA, not Anaheim. All right, now I got to reselect it. Oh, come on, damn it. All 
All right. Obviously, there's no like stats right now because the the season hasn't started and he's never played for the Dodgers before. So what we're looking at are games from last season and he got hurt. He didn't finish the season, but we got 1.5 total base prop. You have minus 130 odds over on DraftKings right now. This seems to be the only line that's open right now, but it's giving you favorable odds to the over. Last season, playing against the St. Louis Cardinals, he did have two games. He did go over, probably hit a home run in this game, and then get you a single here. So for total bases, I'm going to do a quick video, not uh, not right now, probably within the next 24 hours that just goes over MLB scoring on prize picks and underdogs so that you understand how these, how these odds, or excuse me, how these props work. Total bases are just bases that are that are um accumulated through hits you have to hit safely to get a total base you cannot get a total base by walk you cannot get hit by a pitch that is not a total base so he has to hit safely if he hits a double he goes over if he hits a single he needs one more total base if he hits a home run he's over anything over a single he gets it so if you are not familiar with this, uh, if you're not familiar with this, then you, if he gets walked three times in the game, he has zero total bases. And that is a frustrating thing with a hitter like him. Now, the great thing about him being in LA is you really can't pitch around him because that lineup is so stacked. So at some point, they'll be forced to pitch to him with runners on. But just keep that in mind. Walks do not count towards your total base prop. At this point in the season, since there is really little information, I feel like this is a low line for Otani. He's healthy. He's coming into a good environment. I wouldn't be surprised if he starts hot. I think the over on this one makes a lot of sense. Is it Miles My uh, Michaelis who's pitching? Three plate appearances versus Michaelis. 666, uh, excuse me, 667 batting average. He has two singles. Hey, that gets it done. He gets two singles tomorrow. That gets it done. Otani versus righties. 329 batting average last season. Seven triples, 33 homers, 20. All this gets it done. A, sing a triple, a double, or a home run gets it done. It's a good spot. Is the taco already up? Not yet. All right. Let's take a look at... Let's take a look at Bam, not Bam, I'm sorry, Zion. Zion under 39 and a half PRA. Every time I take this dude's under, he gets the over. Every time I take his over, he gets the under. It is just, he and I do not have a great working relationship. I tend to stay away from his player props. I just... I can't figure him out. So over his last 10 games, now that this line has been ballooned up to 39 and a half, these hit rates are terrible. Now, when it was at 37 and a half, much better hit rate. Now he needs 40 PRA to go over. Taking on the Thunder, he has yet to do it in two games against them, going back to 2022. Over his last 10, you just saw four out of the last 10. And then over his last five, one out of his last five monster game against the Detroit Pistons bit of a better team today against the Oklahoma City Thunder he is projected for 38.9 he's projected for 39 on the dot if he gets you 39 and not a penny more then you successfully won that prop if you took the under my fear is that his ass goes crazy and you can't stop him. Or 
what we saw against uh i don't know who it was i don't know what the game was uh i think it was this game against brooklyn where the game was out of hand they were like up by 12 13 points maybe 15 points in the fourth quarter zion is still on the court with less than two minutes in the game and hits two free throws that's the kind of shit that i hate yes you can play the under on this one because it's in a really good spot i'm gonna stay away from zion just because i can't stand his ass but outside of personal opinion you have favorable game logs you have favorable projections and then you also have favorable odds but DraftKings giving it minus 125 to the under. Caesars giving it split odds. And this has been bumped. I wouldn't be surprised if this one gets bumped back to 39. I guess we could talk about Bam's rebounds. He is on the he is on the board. I like them at 10 and a half. Because I was seeing so many uh, Golden State Warriors rebounding props favored for the under, I felt like Bam was in a good spot. If they're not getting the rebounds, who is? Also, he has been doing fairly well over his last 10 games. 50% hit rate, 60 over his last five. Uh, one game this year versus the Warriors, he did get 11 rebounds. One game, one over. It doesn't get a whole lot better than that. He's accurate. It's efficient. He's projected for 12. That's a good number for him. The matchup is there with the Warriors. Uh, outside of Draymond, like you have what? Jackson Trace Davis? Trace Jackson Davis? What's his name? Draymond. Davis, Kaminga, that's your front court. Looney, is Looney in your front court tonight versus Bam? It's a good matchup for him. But at eight and a half, it just seems like too easy, and that scares me. I hate that. But outside of that, I thought it was in a good spot before any sort of taco was introduced. All right, so we have Bam... Zion, Luca, and Middleton. Let's take a look at Middleton's points because those were sitting at 14 and a half for, I mean, at least since 4 30 this morning. That's when I saw it. In the event that Giannis doesn't play for some weird uh, reason, then you locked in some great value if you can get it at 14 and a half, even at 15 and a half. Because this will get bumped up to 17. But two out of his last five. Five out of his last 10. We looked at a lot of uh, a lot of props from Middleton earlier this in the stream. Uh, we looked at his uh, assist. And three pointers. Um, what I like about this is that he's healthy. I guess you can call him healthy. But I think. As the season winds down, we're going to start to see the opposite for him, whereas a lot of players are starting to rest and just kind of get prepared for the playoffs. He's missed so much time that I think these last few games are a great opportunity for Doc Rivers to get his minutes back up and to build his stamina for the playoffs and get him back in shape or, you know, round out his form or whatever. And that way he's got this momentum going into the playoffs. So I don't think his minutes are going to get suppressed unless this game gets out of hand. So I think his minutes are safe. I think we see him get close to 30 minutes, if not over 30 minutes in this game. And if he's on the floor for 30 minutes, I feel like 16 points is well within his range. All right. Middleton, let's look at Lucas points at 33. This one got bumped down. Lucas coming off that monster ass triple double. Look, he got a triple double here and didn't even go over point prop. Didn't go over point prop. I don't know if he got a triple double here. There are a lot of games where he doesn't get you 30 and go, and you don't need 30 points for a triple double. 
So it's possible for him to get you a triple double today and not get you 30 points. That's very possible. Projected for 32.28 as a lot of points. If he got you 32, he goes under point prop, but he probably is well on his way to another triple double and another 80 fantasy point game. Good matchup, like good pace. At 33, BetMGM hated it. Well, they love the under, but hated it. <laughs> Minus 130 to the under. At 32 and a half, this one is getting better odds, but not the best. Play it at 33. Hopefully, he doesn't get you 34. If he hooks you at 33, it could be worse. Or if you fear the hook, just stay away from it. Maybe even look to take the under on his PRA. Or, or again, just stay away from it if you feel like these numbers are just too close to the over. Or play it somewhere else, like on underdog. Is Luca on underdog? At So Luca's at 32 and a half on underdog. This shit's going to get bumped down to 32 and a half on prize picks. Watch. So if you like the under, might as well take it now because it's not going to get any lower or maybe wait for it to drop and then take the over 32 and a half. You could definitely do that. All right, we're going to leave Jovic in there. We already looked at his numbers earlier today. And since we can't take the under on the demon prop, we have to take the over. So I guess we're going over on his threes. If he hits two threes, he should go over points for the game. That's a great way to correlate that. Like the over on Otani's total bases. Zion scares me, but this is the highest we've seen his PRA in a while. So try your luck on this guy. Like the over on Bam and Middleton over 15 and a half points. I think his minutes are secure in the event Giannis doesn't play. Uh, any event that Giannis doesn't play, then um, he's in a better spot. Oh, Bam doesn't... Um, saying that Bam doesn't have good games against the Golden State Warriors. Uh, oh, that's a good point, Weaver. Uh, the allegations were against his agent, right? Where his agent was like uh, siphoning money from his account or something like that. yeah <laughs> his wasn't his agent or whatever that guy was he was like he was sports betting and shit. <laughs> he spent he look that's hey if you're gonna do it you do it with somebody else's money he's that guy's probably making like fifty thousand dollar vets and shit you know with not his money that's how you do it and then you blame that shit on otani you're like I, he did it it's his money you deflect and shift the blame to somebody else. That's how you don't get caught. <laughs> oh, Tiny's going to settle that shit, I'm sure, out of court or whatever. But but if his head's not right, you know, with all this garbage going on, yeah, it's possible like he's not himself. Bam versus the Warriors. Uh, rebounding numbers versus the Warriors. The only few we only have a few games to look at um, against the Warriors. Only showing us three games. The only game he he had this season, he did go over with eleven. The prior two games, yeah, not so good. Not so good at all. Yeah. Maybe the taco is a, is a good taco for him. You know, traditionally doesn't play the Warriors well. He needs he needs nine to go over eight and a half. That's obviously he's gone over that in every game over his last ten. The tacos might be a little suspect today. So again, four games in the NBA. There's not a whole lot going on. Play light. Yeah, Carrie. Yeah, <laughs> right there. Tacos have been trash. Yeah, I agree. They haven't been the best.
So it looks like Bam's probably going to get this, right? At 55.9% of the votes already in. Shea points. We looked up Zion's PRA. Uh, I'll look up Shea's points real quick. I feel like without looking at his game logs, I feel like he's been slumping a little bit in his points. No, I was wrong. <laughs> Why did I think his points were worse than this? Oh, this is against New Orleans. Hold on. Yeah, there you go. I, I felt like he's been going under like in a few of these games. Now, I think one of these, if not two of these games against Memphis, these games were already out of hand. He didn't play a whole lot in the second half. Um, but there are there are a good amount of games where he just doesn't go. Now, the good thing about this game is that you have two really good teams, so hopefully the blowout is not a thing. So you're not going to see him rest in the fourth quarter. Maybe you even see him play a few more minutes. Doesn't this game have, like, seeding implications as well? These, these two teams are pretty – well, no. Uh, the Thunder are, like, what, top two in seeding? But you definitely don't want to lose. You definitely don't want to lose to a Western Conference team. So I would assume that it's full goal for the full go for the Thunder. And we see SGA play his normal run. Numbers against New Orleans. He does have two games this year. One up, one down. Projected for just 25. I'm surprised that Shea is not a taco. Was he in that list? Curry, Draymond, Bam, and Butler. They do know that there are other games on the slate, right? They do know we have three other games on the slate. There better be another taco from another game. That's I don't know why they're targeting that game. It probably has the lowest point total. And it's just incentive for more people to put their money on that game. Shea has a 29 and a half point prop. Okay. Um, numbers against New Orleans are good. Last 10 games, he's had some he's had some misses in there. I don't feel like those are misses because he's he just had now this game against Milwaukee was probably just a bad game. He just had a really bad game. Him and Dame both just had bad games. But I think a few of these unders have just been due to games being out of hand. And that's really not, I mean, your team is so good that you're not getting play in the fourth quarter. I mean, that's like, there are worse things in the world. I think this game stays competitive and I think he gets you more than 25 points. The question is, can he get you 30 today? The odds on the over for his 29 and a half today are over on Fandle, over on DraftKings, under on Caesars. You got two books out of the four books liking the over, one book liking the under, and then BetMGM is giving you split odds at 30 and a half. So I wonder what they I wonder what this is on BetMGM at 29 and a half. Who knows? Actually, we know because we can look it up on Odd Shopper. Real quick, before we dip out, we went over three rounds of player props. So well over 25 player props today. Screenshotting these, throwing these over in the Discord. Right now, I just want to take a look at some lines across the industry. I want to search for SGA and see what his line of 29 and a half is going for on all the books. Because if BetMGM doesn't have an under for it at a higher line, then I want to know what it is at the lower line. All right, so Pinnacle has the under 29 and a half at minus 107. Yeah, so all of these books have the under at minus 107, 110, 108. 
Let's see if we can find any uh, pick'em sites for his points. He's at 30 points on Dabble. Oh no, what is that? Is that Dabble? Chalkboard, that's Dabble. Give me 29 points. Where are we at? Is it going to get bumped up to 30? Is that why we're not seeing it? All right, let's just see. Okay, so... Pinnacle has it over 29 and a half. Wow. Oh, I think I was looking at Fliff. I was looking at the bet table. Okay, so pick them table, slightly different. There is juice to the over on this one. Pinnacle likes it. You have, um, where's bet MGM? Minus 125 to the over on this one at 29 and a half. The numbers are going down a little bit. It's the lowest we've had his points in a while, right? We were getting his points at 31 and a half, 32 and a half, and they got up to 33 and a half. Now you're getting them under 30. It's a good spot for the over. The problem is the matchup isn't, isn't all that great. On the other hand, it should keep the game close and we don't have to worry about blowout. So you can also look at it like that. For SGA. Um, but yeah, that's going to be it. Articles down here already posted for plays today. Expert picks. Let's take a quick look at the expert picks real quick. If you, if you need some extra picks or if you just want to see what other people are playing, I'll show you what these expert picks look like, and then you can see if you can find these lines anywhere else. Draymond under rebounds. Jalen Williams under 21 and a half points and assists. Davis over points. Davis over rebounds. Zion over 38 and a half, but we saw the under on 39 and a half. There's Bam right there over rebounds. There are a lot of overs today. 32 and a half points and rebounds for Zion. Curry under his points, and there is Pajemski under five and a half rebounds. So again, Dr uh, Green under rebounds and Pajemski under rebounds, and then Bam over rebounds. That's a correlation. You could stack that if you wanted to. That's a decent correlation. All right. We covered a lot in today's stream. Hour and 30 minutes in. We are done. 34 of you still on the stream. Appreciate y'all being here. Let's see if I missed anything. No. Yeah, Jim, you're playing the BAM double. I saw it in your slip. Double-double on, on underdog. I think he's in a good spot for the double-double. If you don't like the over on his rebounds, if you feel like, man... His numbers against Golden State aren't all that great. Then you can look to play his double-double on underdog because he just needs 10 to qualify for a double-double. So he may not be able to get you 11 or 12 rebounds, but you think he can get you 10? Play the double-double prop on underdog. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, that is going to do it for today's live stream. One hour and 30 minutes in and we're done very quickly, very quickly. If you happen to be in a state that does not support prize picks or underdog, or if you are just in need of another place to play, to um, to play your players uh, props or just any other book, let me know. I got links. Let's link up. All these links are in my stream description. You can click on any one of those links. And uh, sign up. BetMGM is still giving you the 150 in bonus bets. DraftKings, 150 in bonus bets. 200 in bonus bets on FanDuel. Bet365 limited, not across the, not across all states, but if you can play it in your state, all of these are giving you fantastic sign up promo bonuses, all those good things. And also, if you 
want to play on different pick'em sites hot streak jock market i got links in the description so look them over click them use them and that's it there's my um here's my infomercial right there all right appreciate y'all lasting this long if you haven't done so yet uh consider subbing up to the channel definitely hit the like button on your way out be sure to turn those notification bells on so you don't miss out on the next live stream which will be tomorrow morning at 9 a.m if you want to get a jump on my plays and not wait for the live stream be sure to check out the discord where i do where i do post a cheat sheet pretty early and probably earlier than you're up the cheat sheets waiting on you so check that out a lot of other good information in the discord for you to check out and we go live monday tuesday wednesday friday and saturday at 9 a.m well saturday's 9 30 but we go live so appreciate y'all being here uh taco tuesday we should have a few valuable plays on the board but again it's a very short slate in the nba so play light be smart with your money don't spend it all today because tomorrow we got like 100 games going on in the NBA. So make sure you have enough money left in your account so you don't have to deposit. L play. Play smart. Live to play another day. We'll be back tomorrow, 9 a.m. with another Player Prop live stream. Until, that hurt. Until tomorrow's live stream, <laughs> Chavez is out. Thank you.